Hello and welcome to this training program. Uh, my name is Stefan and I am so excited that you are here. Now in the world of cybersecurity, there are tools and there are legends. The Wireshark in this case is a legend, but here's a secret that most people won't tell you is that almost, almost every in, everyone in IT knows of Wireshark. They know how to open it. They know how to click that blue shark pin button and they know how to start a capture but they see a wall of green, blue, and black text, and they get just get overwhelmed and they close it. Now, they are using a nuclear-powered microscope to read the newspaper. And this lecture, this entire course, is about to changing that. Now, this isn't just Wireshark 101. We're not just going to learn what the buttons do. We're going to learn how to think in packets. Now, we are going to learn how to hunt for the digital shadows that attackers leave behind. Now we are going to go beyond the packet capture and into the world of packet interrogation. Now we are going to learn how to find the story in the data because every, every single cyber attack from the simplest port scan to the most sophisticated nation state data theft must cross some network, right? And that is the power of Wireshark. And this is Advanced Wireshark. Uh, this is the Threat Hunting and Network Forensics. And by the time we are done here, you won't just see the well of text in this case, you will see the truth. Let's get started. So you may ask here, what's on the agenda today? Now, this is our flight plan. First and the most important part, we are going to talk about the forensic mindset. Now, this isn't the tool. Now, this is a way of thinking. Now, it's a difference between a technician and a true digital detective. We are going to learn how to approach a problem, not as a collection of packets, but as a crime scene. Next, we will dive into technical details, which is advanced filtering. I'm going to show you how to go beyond this IP dot address, and we are going to get surgical here. I will show you how to use the Wireshark's filter engine to find that exact one or two packets you need out of a capture file containing millions. And then the magic, reconstructing the activity. We are not just going to see that an attacker talked to our server, but we are going to rebuild exactly what they said. We will follow their TCP streams, we will see the commands they typed, and we will even learn how to export the malicious files they used right from the network capture. And after that, we will zoom out. We will go to the statistical analysis. So what do you do when you don't know what you are looking for? How do you find the unknown of unknowns? I will show you how to use the Wireshark's graphing and statistics tools to find anomalies and patterns that the human eye will never catch. And finally, we will put it all together in a case study. We are going to hunt for one of the most common and dangerous signs of a compromise, which is a command and control or C2 channel. Now we will find that low and slow beaconing that tells us an attacker has a foothold in our network. Now, this is a packed lecture. It's the foundation for everything that comes after. So let's get into it. All right. Now, before we type a single command, we need to get our heads in the right place. Now, this slide here says it all. Don't just look for a single packet. Look for the story. So you may ask here, what does that mean? For example, a novice here opens a Wireshark and looks for a packet with the synchronization flag and says, oh, that's the connection start. An expert analyst sees that synchronization packet and asks, why? So why is this machine here talking to the machine here? Is this normal? Is it the middle of the night? Is this a user-initiated action? Or is it a script? Is it the first time they have ever talked? Or the thousands or millions, right? Now, you see, a single packet here is a word, but the TCP stream is a whole sentence. A full session is a conversation. Now, your job as a forensic investigator or a threat hunter is to piece together those conversations to find the true story. And the attacker's story is one of a deception in this case here. They want to look like a normal traffic. They want to hide in the noise. And our job is to find that one word that's out of place the one conversation that doesn't belong there. 
And this mindset here changes everything. You stop being a passive observer and you become an active hunter. You are not just looking at logs. You are a digital detective and the packets captured is your crime scene. Now, every packet is a potential clue in this case and your job is to find them, link them, and tell the story of what really happened in that crime scene. Okay, now let's get our hands dirty. Now, let's say you have got a 500 megabyte packet capture and you have been told something weird happened. Where would you start? You start here with filters. Now, this is your scapel. Now, let's look at these examples uh, because we are moving way beyond the IP address here. Now, uh, look at the first one, the port scanning, right? Now, uh, TCP flanks uh, synchronization one and TCP flag acknowledgement zero. Now, what are we really looking at? We are looking at the, the knock for the door with no answer. Now, this filter finds only the synchronization packets, an attacker running a tool like uh, Nmap or just a casual network scanner is going to send thousands of these knocks to all your doors. In this case, it's going to be your ports, right? To see who answers. So if you see one IP address sending a massive spray of these packets to a target, you're not guessing. You're watching the reconnaissance phase of an attack in real time. Now, the second time is a data exfiltration. Uh, the HTTP request method uh, post here. Now, you can think about this. So, what does your web browser do 99% of the time? It gets data. You get a web page, you get an image. And the post request is when your computer sends or uploads data. So, why is this a big deal here? Now, as a thread hunter, I can sort my entire capture by the size of the post request. And if I see a user's machine, which has no business uploading anything, suddenly send 300 megabyte post to random IP in a country I don't do business with, I don't have a suspicion. I have a data exfiltration event and I just found the theft. And finally, the malicious DNS. The DNS query name contains exam. Now, this is a great example of a quick and dirty hunt. Uh, so why would the domain name ever have that exe in it? So it wouldn't, right? <laughs> now, this is a classic sign of malware using DNS for its command and control. And these are just two, three examples. We are going to learn hundreds. And this is how you shrink a million packets down to the 10 that matter. And this, this is the payoff. All that filtering, all that hunting, it leads to you to one suspicious conversation. And now you get to be the fly on the wall. You see, all those individual packets are just pieces of larger conversation. And Wireshark has a genius feature that puts them all back together for you. Now, if you find the packet in a suspicious stream, you right click and you select the follow TCP stream. And what you get here is magic. Now, instead of seeing the synchronization, synchronization acknowledgement, 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 you see the data. And as this screenshot shows, if the protocol is a plain text like the HTTP, FTP, Telnet, or an old insecure command and control channel, you will see exactly what the attacker typed. Now, I want you to pause and uh, think about how powerful this is. Now, I have personally used this feature in a real world incident to watch an attacker live on the wire, and we watched them log in, we saw them type lsla to list files, we saw them use the cat uh, password file, we even saw them misspell a command, he hit a backspace and retyped it. And from a forensic standpoint, this is irrefutable proof. Now, it's a full transcript of the crime. So, the following the stream is like listening to attacker's phone call. And this slide, this is how we get our hands on the weapon they are talking about. Now, let's say, in the TCP stream here, uh, you see the attacker's type a uh, command like wjet, or for example, able.com, wjet, or malware.exe, right? Now, okay, great, we know what they did, but 
Now what? We need to have that file, we need to analyze it, and we need to reverse engineer it so to see what it does. And we need to get its hash, which is its uh, digital fingerprint, so we can hunt for it on every other computer in our network. And we could go to that evil.com website, but please don't do that. This is a great way to get yourself infected. And the safe way, uh, the forensic way, is to extract that file directly from the packet capture. And the file is hurried across your network. Uh, it's in your capture. And Wireshark makes this incredibly easily. You just go to File, Export Object, HTTP, and Wireshark will show you every single file that was downloaded over the HTTP in that entire capture. And you will see images from a website, the text files, and you will see the malware that exists. them. And you can select it, save it to secure in a sandbox, of course. Now, you have the actual payload. You have the evidence. You didn't just see the attack, you have captured the bullet. And this is how real world incident response is done. All right, uh, we've been surgical so far, uh, but what if you don't know what you're looking for? Now, welcome to the statistics menu. Now, this is the most underrated part of a Wireshark. It turns a million packets into one pattern. You need to click on endpoints. Uh, Wireshark instantly shows you the chattiest device on your network. For example, like why is your printer talking to an, an IP in China, right? You found your first lead. And uh, you need to click conversation. This is the who is talking to who map. Uh, instantly spot the largest or longest running connections. And we also have the protocol hierarchy. Now, you think your network is all web traffic? Now, this shows you everything. Uh, like, why is there BitTorrent traffic, right? Or why is someone running a protocol you've never heard of? And this is how you find unknown of unknowns. Now, this is a real threat hunting. Now, speaking of patterns, uh, let's talk about the graphs. The input output graph uh, is your best friend, because uh, this graph tells a story. The y-axis here is packet uh, per seconds, and x-axis is time. Now look at the low-level baseline here. The drip, drip, drip is your normal, network's normal heartbeat, right? And then look at the spike. Now this is not a drip, this is a fire hose. Now, uh, this is anomaly here, and now this could be a visual proof of that 300 megabyte data theft uh, we have talked about, and this is the smash and grab attack. And the best part is you can click anywhere on this graph and the Wireshark jumps you to the exact packet in your capture. To see this anomaly, click the anomaly and find the clue. Uh, the previous slide uh, was the loud attacker here, but there are also uh, smart attackers uh, are slow and low. Now, this is a beaconing, uh, the digital heartbeat of a compromised machine. So when a malware infects a host, it phones home to its command and control server, C2 server. It sends a tiny beacon that says, hi boss, any commands? And the C2 says, nope. Check back in five minutes. And exactly five minutes later, it beacons again. This steady, rhythmic, unhuman pattern is what you see here. And humans aren't precise. Uh, a script is here in this case. So when you find this pattern, this perfect digital metronome, you have a found sleeper agent. You have found just a C2 channel. And here is a quick preview of the really advanced stuff we will cover in this course. Because attackers love to abuse DNS because it's almost always allowed out. The first we have a DNS tunneling. Now this is a genius level evil here. The attackers encode stolen data inside a DNS query. They smuggle data out right through your own DNS server. We also have a DGA, uh, Domain Generation Algorithms. For example, the attacker's malware generates 
10,000 new random domains every day and the attacker only registers one. So we catch this by looking for a storm of not found errors from one machine. And uh, we also have a fast flag. Uh, this is the C2 shell game. Uh, the IP for evil.com changes every five seconds to avoid being blocked. And this is the cutting edge of network forensics and we are going to hunt for all of it. Yes, the Wireshark is the greatest tool ever, but it's not lonely hero, it's a star player on a team. So a real investigation uses a workflow. The first is analyze the payloads. You extracted that malware that exit from a Wireshark, right? Now you check its hash on a Wiresoto, which confirms, yep, 70 antiviruses hate this file. And the second is correlate with logs. Now this is the holy grail. You take your network evidence from Wireshark and pivot to your host evidence in your SIM, which is like Splunk, right? You see the beacon at 10.5 uh, in Wireshark and in your SIAM, you see a malicious pro process spawn at exactly 10.05 p.m. Now you have connected the two dots here. And automate the scale, right? You can't stare <laughs> at a wire shark all day. Your eyes will be sore, right? You use T shark. Now it's a command line brother of the wire shark, which we will uh, also cover this in uh, this course. Uh, it's used to automate these hounds and send you alerts. And in this course, we are not just uh, learning one tool, we are learning the whole process.